Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. Great to be together here. Welcome to our Savior. This beautiful day God has created. Welcome you who are joining us from home. You're a very special part of the family of faith here at our Savior today. You know, I, again, I didn't think we'd be having these debates about whether it was too hot or not until at least July. Uh, but once again, God provided a, a gorgeous morning. We're going to be comfortable. I know you're looking into the sun. Maybe 10 o'clock, they're going to swelter out a little bit. That's all right. We'll let them worry about that, right? Just wonderful uh, to be together here in God's house. I'm Pastor Keith Piotr, Pastor Caleb Waite. Uh, we welcome you. Eric Bry at the Switches, our youth minister. Kathy is uh, playing the... Uh, organ for us today to lead us in an opportunity to worship and praise our great creator redeemer god which is our natural response to his goodness and grace in our lives quick little announcement first of all you see the uh the window is completed uh that is an exciting thing it's a little difficult to see when the sun's blaring in your eyes uh we're still waiting for be another week or two before we get some flood lighting behind it and once we do that then we're going to have even a little dedication uh, and kind of beginning and opening uh, for that. But uh, what a joy that is to have that completed. You recognize we have a baptism out here this morning, and it's just a humbling joy for me as well. Um, uh, our grandson, uh, Clayton Drew, son of Tricia and Andrew Piotr, will be baptized here at the beginning of the worship hour, and that's just so exciting. Uh, for us, and that uh, we get to participate in that and be reminded of our identity in Christ by virtue of him marking us at our baptism. One other announcement, and that is today is a nationally, it's the National Day of Recognition and Prayer for Law Enforcement. And this year, we're going to take a moment to, uh, uh, to recognize the men and women of our congregation. Uh, we actually have nine people that are in law enforcement in our congregation. And we've always had a prayer every year, this year being that it's just a tougher year politically and just in this climate of how it's difficult for law enforcement to carry out their work. Want these nine uh, members of our church uh, to know that they, that we, their congregation, their pastors, we've got their back and we are fully supporting and holding them up in before the Lord. You should have an insert that kind of explains that, but we'll have that recognition briefly at the end of the worship hour. So we're still looking at the book of uh, Genesis. When we uh, introduced this series a couple weeks ago, we introduced it by saying, is, is, you know, if we as Christians forget our history, the true story, God's story, if we forget that, it can be disastrous. And so we've looked at creation from Genesis 1 and 2. Last week we looked at the fall of Adam and Eve into sin, Genesis 3. Today we're in Genesis 4. We're taking a look at the story of Cain and Abel. Next week we'll go on to Noah, and those chapters are chapters 5 through 9. So if you're kind of trekking along, today we're in chapter 4. Read chapters 5 through 9 next week, and that'll set you up well. So we continue to look at these key stories of true biblical history that create the foundation for our Christian faith. That's our theme. Again, welcome you very warmly here today and pray this is a very special hour spent in the presence of our living God. Let's stand if you feel comfortable and we will begin with our opening song.
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, and you'll be able to follow along as the order of holy baptism is printed for you in the bulletin that you have. Our loving Father comes today to give his gift of grace and his new life to Clayton. Today, through God's word, connected to this simple water, the Holy Spirit calls Clayton to be his disciple, gathers him into the body of Christ, and enlightens him with the gifts of forgiveness and eternal life. Through baptism, Clayton becomes an heir with us of the kingdom of heaven. Clayton, receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ, crucified and risen for you. All of us share in this baptismal moment, testifying that we too are sinners in constant need of the forgiveness that God gives to us through holy baptism. So we pray. Heavenly Father, forgive us our sins and grant us your grace. Brothers and sisters, Jesus laid down his life and rose again for Clayton, and he laid down his life and rose again for you and me. In holy baptism, God washed away the guilt of your sin. Be assured that as you repent, you live in the gift of his forgiveness and his grace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Andrew and Tricia. Clayton is God's gift to you, as are Harper, Cameron, and Calvin. You've been entrusted with his physical and spiritual life by his Heavenly Father. Even as you provide food, clothing, shelter, and safety for him, do you promise to provide the spiritual food necessary so that Clayton can grow tall and powerful in his spiritual life? Will you bring him to God's house often and help him grow in his faith through the ministries offered through your congregation? Godparents have the special responsibility of supporting God's children in their faith walk throughout their lives, but especially until that time when they can take responsibility for making their own commitments of faith. Caitlin and Adam, as Clayton's godparents, Will you pray regularly for him? Will you tell him of this day and its significance? And will you give yourselves to him as spiritual parents and mentors? Yes. When a child is born again of water and the spirit and baptism, the challenging task of nurturing, molding, guiding, and admonishing begins. Will you, as members of our Savior, do everything within your power to support Clayton and his parents by providing a community of Christian nurture and care, a ministry where they can continue to grow in their faith, and by praying for Clayton as he learns how to walk and run in the faith. May God then empower each one of us to remain faithful to these promises we make today in God's presence. Andrew and Tricia, Caitlin and Adam, speaking in Clayton's behalf, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? And then family of faith joining in. Do you believe in God the Father? Yes. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in God the Son? Yes. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As Clayton receives the gifts of forgiveness, adoption, and new life, we join together to ask the blessing of God upon him as we pray together the prayer Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God causes Clayton to become part of his body now through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He connects the promises of his powerful word to this water. Clayton Drew Piotr, I baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Clayton, God has freed you. He's made you a part of his Christian community. He has given you his name, sweetheart. You belong to him. We have uh, special memorabilia for you and uh, certificates. There's a gift bag behind you there, Clayton, Trisha. You can grab that. Uh, it's got certificates in there, a blanket that was made uh, for Clayton. As you've seen a few of these things before. Uh, also, this banner, beautifully made. Uh, I have called you by name, Clayton. You are mine for you to take that with you afterwards as well. Caitlin, can I take him? Oh, he's just a precious little peanut. <laughs> Would you join me in welcoming Clayton to the family of faith through the waters of holy baptism? What a little gift. He's wearing a white little bow tie. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have called Clayton to be a part of your church and this Christian community through the water of baptism. Now we pray that you will strengthen the serving hearts and minds of his parents, Andrew and Tricia, his siblings, Harper, Cameron, and Calvin, his godparents, Caitlin and Adam, and his grandparents, as all of them together nurture the faith that you have planted. Amen. And Clayton, may the grace of God and peace from him, the Lord Jesus Christ, be with and remain with you forever. Amen. You could return to your seats at this time. reading from the Old Testament book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. And later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from, from some of the firstborn of his flock. 
the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, not so. If anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake, while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even a hundred times. And then Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock, our living Redeemer, Jesus. Amen. So the fall, or original sin in the Garden of Eden, that's the starting point to all sin in the world, all pain, all brokenness in the world. Adam and Eve, having made two very fatal decisions. Number one, they broke trust with God. 
And number two, they decided that instead of being served by God, they decided they wanted to be God. And they now knew good and evil. And as a result, they were completely incapable of falling into evil. Adam and Eve were no longer innocent. And you and I are living within that reality still today. And it's amazing to me how things just here in Genesis already, by chapter 4, it, it just doesn't take very long. Things start to snowball out of control. Adam and Eve had to learn how to provide for themselves outside of the garden with nothing. They started a family. And then in chapter 4, we find already understanding God informs us about anger and about jealousy, the horrifying results leading to the loss of human life, and not by natural causes. Cain takes his brother Abel's life. And to this day, fighting between people and within families and fighting between people groups and senseless violence internationally and in our own country cities captures our attention and it captures our emotions today and it is ugly and it's ugly to God too and although there are so many stories then from here on out after Genesis the Bible demonstrating this ugliness of sin what you and I want to catch here right away in the Old Testament, starting with Genesis, is how God is both just and he is merciful at the same time. And ultimately, we see already here how this starts to lead to the fulfillment of his plans to make everything right again. So how did it happen? How could this be? Cain brought some of the fruit of his soil as an offering to the Lord. Cain worked the crops. And Abel worked the livestock. Abel, we're taught, brought the Lord portions from the firstborn of his flock as an offering. And God looked with favor upon Abel's offering, but not on Cain's. We don't really know exactly why Abel's offering was accepted by God and Cain's was not. We do know in the book of Hebrews, there's one verse that says this very event has to do with faith, with Abel. It had to do with trust, with God. So we get the sense that was lacking in Cain's life. But Cain gets angry. Notice he doesn't repent. Notice he doesn't go back and kind of get another offering. I'm going to get it right this time, Lord. No. Adam and Eve's jealousy, Adam and Eve's selfishness now begins to play itself out in their son Cain's life. It's not fair. Ever say that before? Kids pointing to their brother and sister. It's not fair, Mommy. Hey, we come by it honestly. When we think that something is unjust, when someone else got what we deserve, and that's what's going on in Cain's heart. And so God steps in and he tells Cain, Cain, do what's right and you'll be accepted. See, Cain knew how to tithe. He knew how to give of the first fruits. He knew how to give cheerfully to the Lord. So actually, I want you to notice what God is doing here. God is actually encouraging Cain here. He's actually trying to comfort Cain. Cain, just do the right thing. And it'll be fine. But then a warning. Cain, when you know what's right and don't do it, listen to this. Sin is crouching at your door, and it desires to have you. 
This is a warning to me. This is a warning to you. Because frankly, you and I inherited this very same thing from Cain. Knowing what's right and wrong. Remember, we were created in the image of God. Now, to be honest, it is a very broken image. But like Cain, often you and I know exactly what is right. What the right thing is to say. What the right thing is to do. And we don't. We don't do it. We don't say it. This past week, on several occasions, can I be honest with you for a minute? On several occasions this past week, it was very real to me, looking in the mirror and sensing the Holy Spirit say, Piotr, sin is crouching at your door. Better be careful. Anyone relate? And all too often, you and I look at sin as being just really nothing more than a, a choice, an alternative. We let secular culture and institutions and our personal politics decide for us what's right and wrong or change for us what's right and wrong. When you and I as human beings, we know because we're made in the image of God. We've got a personality. We've got spirituality. We've got a conscience. We've got morality. We know. It's why St. Peter in his first epistle describes the devil as a lion. A lion that is lying down just waiting for the opportunity. You and I could just stop thinking of sin as something we do from time to time. We do occasionally, right? Sometimes, sometimes I make wrong choices, parents. I know we like to use this terminology with our children. Bad choice, good choice. The fact of the matter is we have to make sure that our kids grow up to understand exactly what sin is. And ultimately that all sin is an affront to God and an offense to God. And that there is a crouching beast there waiting who wants to have them. Wants to have your kid. We all have issues in our lives. We all have those temptations. We all have those weak areas that the devil is so aware of. It's not just a bad choice. It's not just a good choice. And Satan knows that. So he has this way, doesn't he, of manipulating the situation so that you and I just kind of justify our behavior. From the Garden of Eden to the dry wilderness out in the field where Cain took his brother Abel's life, to this very beautiful morning in Bettendorf. Something else we learn here in Genesis 4 is why it is that holding on to anger is so dangerous. In and of itself, Anger is not sin. Anger is an emotion, actually, that God gives to us that can serve a very valuable purpose. Anger can actually serve to make the situation right. Do something constructive to bring peace. In fact, there's this great passage from Ephesians chapter 4. I love to bring this up when talking to a couple about ready to get married. This verse in Ephesians 4 that says, In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Because husbands and wives know too, being angry in and of itself is not sin. But it is often a doorway to sin. Don't we all here know people that have just been hanging on to anger for too long? Hanging on to resentment? And it's literally changed them. It has controlled them. It's toxic. And it's affecting their relationships. 
Anger is not something you and I are meant to hold on to. And Cain found that out the hard way. We have to let go of it with God's help. We have to forgive with the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to move on. Vengeance is mine. We are to turn it over to the one where God says, vengeance is mine, meaning I'll take care of it. Let go of it. I'll take care of it. The Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? How many of you knew that that line came from this story? Spoken by the first murderer trying to cover up his sin. The Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse, Cain, and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground from now on, it will no longer yield crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. You remember from Pastor Caleb reading it, Cain is he's horrified by what this punishment means. What a tragic story. However, the big picture, the big picture, Genesis 4 is about God being just and God being merciful at the same time. And that's a good thing because there is a whole lot of injustice out there, isn't there? And here in Genesis chapter 4, we begin to see and we're taught as Christians how to deal with that. And first of all, we come to understand that sin does not and cannot solve injustice. You know, Abel didn't do anything wrong, in this case anyway. Cain is actually angry with God, but he decides to take his anger on God out on his brother Abel. And it doesn't solve a thing. Makes me think about how often we can be guilty of taking our anger out on somebody else. Someone who's not even involved. How often we can take our anger on something out, on, on the people who are closest to us. Why do we do that? And we see that all over the place. Law enforcement has to clean up this kind of mess all the time, don't you guys? Anger being taken out on innocent people. Starting with Cain, that kind of reaction towards injustice only makes things worse. But here's the thing, and here's the note we need to end on. Here's the thing. If there's anyone who could understand injustice, it's our Heavenly Father. The shedding of innocent blood in Cain's life, actually the Bible says, cries out to God. Abel's blood you know, if that's true, think about how over the course of centuries since then, all of the innocent blood that has been taken, imagine all that blood calling out to God. What that must sound like to his ears. The volume. And, here we go, especially the blood of his own son. See here what the story of Cain and Abel points us to. The first son being killed, Adam's son, leading all the way to God's son being killed, Jesus. That horrible injustice because of Adam's sin and Cain's sin and your and my sin culminating on an ugly cross. 
Hey, does the crucifixion of Jesus seem just to you? Does it? The sinless Son of God, so full of love and compassion, so full of truth, taking the fall for you and me. Any, any justice in that? No. No way. God knows injustice. And the greatest news of all is that within that tragic injustice, 2,000 years ago, Jesus' blood crying out to the Father, you and I are made just. You and I are made right. God doesn't just make things right. He doesn't just make things just. God makes you just. <laughs> he makes you right. We said last week, all sin has its consequences. But God establishes and accomplishes his justice with grace. That beautiful verse from Romans 5, we have been justified by Jesus' blood. The consequences of our sin washed away by the blood of Christ, killed in your place and in mine so that you and I can have what we could never accomplish for ourselves. Forgiveness complete. New life now and into eternity. You're crying out for justice? God gives you and I so much more. First, demonstrating that mercy and that love for Cain forcing him to wander around the earth as a fugitive. Yeah, that was rough, but did you catch it? God placing a mark on Cain, some kind of a mark. We don't exactly know what it is, but God in his mercy placing this mark on Cain that was to remind him for the rest of his life and to remind the people around him that God, in fact, is the true God of justness and the true God of loving mercy. May he indeed love you and bless you. All the way to glory. Amen. Genesis 4. This time I invite you all to please stand as you are able, as we lift our hearts together in prayer, as we pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Let us pray. Almighty, everlasting God, just as you have sent your Son to die for us, we give you thanks and praise that his blood cries out from the cross in our behalf. And that his blood cries out and it makes us righteous. That it pleads for our souls and it forgives us of our sins. Let me thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for the whole world. And we thank you for raising him from the dead. And let me ask that this may be our confidence going forward into this week and to every day of our lives, knowing that we arise a new creation. That Christ's blood covers us and cleanses us from all sin that we would go forward to live holy lives. We ask and pray that you would give us the strength and courage to do so, keeping us from sin that crouches at the door and helping us to walk holy in your sight. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Heavenly Father, we live up, lift up to you all of our brothers and sisters who are in need of physical health and healing. Uh, Lord, we lift up to you, little baby, Ava Glenn, a toddler at home and who is recovering from being sick and hospitalized with a fever and dehydration. We thank you that she is recovering. We thank you that the doctors and the nurses were able to care for her and treat her and that she will soon be well. Lord, we lift up to you our brother, Craig Borg, who is recovering from eye surgery. We ask uh, and we thank you that there was a successful surgery and now we ask that Craig would continue to recover until he makes a full recovery and that everything goes smoothly. And we lift up to you our sister Kim Day, who's a preschool staff member recently diagnosed with uh, several health issues. B 
be with Kim and her family as they go ahead in the days forward, that they would continue to walk in your truth, in your hope, that you would also give them peace and comfort as they continue to walk this path. And finally, Lord, we lift up to you our sister Joan Sutcliffe, who has entered into hospice care with several serious health issues. In these last days, comfort Joan, be with Joan, protect her with your word, and keep her steadfast in the faith. We pray for these, our brothers and sisters, and all of those in our hearts and our minds now. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you with great thanksgiving and praise to the the Parchard family, Mandy and Andy, as they welcomed Charles Parchard into their family this past week. We also lift up Mandy, who is just out of the hospital following an infection, and we thank you that she has recovered well. Lord, we thank you for the gift of children. And we thank you for Charlie as he is a proof that you continue to create life in a dying world. We ask that you would continue to be with the Partridge family as they raise both Charlie and Henry in the faith. And soon as they bring Charlie to the waters of baptism. And we thank you for the marriage yesterday afternoon of Devin Rockhold and Abigail Kling, the son of Tracy Beardsley and her new daughter-in-law. We thank you for the gift of marriage. And may their marriage be a reminder to all of us who are married that this is a holy institution and we ask that you would bless them in their life together that they would remain faithful to one another as an example of christ and his bride the church and finally lord we thank you and we rejoice with the whole company of heaven at the baptism of clayton here this morning as you have claimed another one of your children to the fold of the flock of christ and we ask that the Holy Spirit would continue to do his work through Andrew and Trisha as they raise Clayton up in the faith. We thank you for this bountiful gift. And we thank you for your mercy. We'll give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before we come forward to this meal of grace where Christ comes and meets himself with, uh, comes and gives us his body and blood. Uh, just a few notes of procedure if this is your first time here or if you are visiting for communion. Uh, that we are going to kind of continue this coming from the outside and coming in. Uh, if you're on my right, your left, please use the outside to come in and then you'll exit through the left side of the rail. Uh, on this side, uh, you're going to use the sidewalk by the flag and uh, whoever's first, you decide which way you're going to go and everyone else just follow you if that sounds good. Uh, you will not be ushered out of your seats. Just come forward as you are ready and comfortable as you prepare uh, as we come forward to this meal where we join in one common confession that this is Christ's true body and blood given to us for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus has prepared this for us today. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he also took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Please share that peace of God with those around you. Um, I'm not sure. You'll have to see what comes up next. If it's just a title slide, or if, you know, if they have the words, but the words are there, then yes. If not, just keep the title slide up for a little bit. And then just utilize this one for.
And now may this, the true body and blood of our living and loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, be God's blessing unto each of you in the true faith, keeping you steadfast in that hope, in that joy, in that life, until life eternal. Amen. So at this time, we're going to pause just for a brief second before our closing uh, benediction and song. As I mentioned earlier, I, this year in particular, in the, within the climate that we live in, uh, and doing a count all of a sudden to find out we've got at least nine law enforcement officers in the congregation, and a church our size, I very well could be forgetting someone. I searched, I looked, so if you are one, I'm going to apologize right now. And... Uh, ask that you kind of step forward. We want to keep you in our prayers as well. But none of these guys and gals went into law enforcement for recognition. Uh, they went in it for love for their community and their fellow man. And I think we all understand what it means to live at peace because they're working hard at various levels and running in to danger for us in our place. So just to take a quick moment there are nine, I'd invite you to just stand right now, just nine of you, there are two that can't make it. If you would please stand. Ian Cornwell, Iowa State Trooper. Michael Griffin, Detective, Moline Department. Gene Carson, Deputy Chief, Geneseo. Eric Wells, Moline, AJ Poyer, Davenport, Benjamin Piotr, City of Davenport, Angie Morris, Residential Manager, Scott County Correctional Officer, Tara Frecking, Scott County Probation Parole Officer. We also invited um, Chief of Police of Bettendorf, Keith Kimball, to come, as well as uh, Sheriff Lane. Neither one of those two could make it. Angie could not make it as well, so I was very thankful that so many could make it here. Would you please join me in thanking these men and women for the service to their country? We went ahead and we got a gift for each one of you, just a little token of our appreciation, a shirt on the front, a flag with a blue cross on it. The Bible verse says, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. And on the back side, a Bible verse from Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God goes with you wherever you go want to be able to put this in your hands here before you leave here today. While they remain standing, everyone else remains seated. Let's pray for them, then I'll have you stand for the closing. Gracious God, we ask that you carefully watch over all men and women in law enforcement, particularly those in our own neighborhoods, cities, on our highways, in our correctional systems. Protect them, and particularly these nine in our congregation, from harm in the performance of their duty to stop crime, robbery, riots, violence. Help them keep our streets and homes safe. We commend them to your loving care because their duty can be dangerous. And in this day and age, even unappreciated and disrespected. Assure them and their families and their co-workers of our love and support as they carry out their assignments. Amen. And if the rest of you would stand at this point. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you. Give you his peace. And all God's children said. Amen.
entered to worship? 